Okay, let's uh, get back to what's happening across the Atlantic and breaking news with British Parliament just suspending its session until its series of votes on four. Brexit alternatives are completed, and we could get results in just a few minutes. Now, meantime, shares of U.S. automakers are revving up today after China says it will continue to suspend additional tariffs on American vehicles and also auto parts. So this rapprochement of sorts comes as China's vice premier, Liu He. He's heading to the U.S. to move trade talks forward in Washington, D.C. this week, which will restart on Wednesday. But uh, lots to talk through. And joining us now, we have the former Undersecretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment, Bob Hormat's joins us in studio today. So, Bob, lots to talk through. I guess we'll start with Brexit since we saw the Speaker of Parliament, John Burkow, there. Looks like uh, we are awaiting a vote on those four motions once again. Uh, there are some good ones on the table with the soft Brexit and customs unions, also the free trade zone. Then there are two alternatives which aren't so great, especially for Theresa May. We need a deal, don't we? Oh, I definitely think we need a deal. And I think the continent needs a deal, too. The problem is, what are the terms of the deal? And they're so divided in Parliament at this point that perhaps this process will, if not reach full agreement, narrow the differences and demonstrate that there's one preferred option. Which is not a softer Brexit, by the way, at this point with parliamentary politics at play. So the two alternatives I think are probably most likely at this point is that th that means that the uh, they have to have a second referendum on how you want to split from yes. the EU. Well, one would be if they if they come to an agreement in the parliament, it says you need to have a second referendum to reaffirm it. And the other is that if you can agreement, you get an agreement, you go to the European the commission, cap in hand, cap in hand, and say we'd like more time. If you don't get more time, then you have the option of leaving, or suspending or revoking Article 50, which is in effect saying you're not ready to leave at all. Right. And so, so does that mean revoking Brexit, meaning it will never happen? It could be done that way, or it could be temporarily. The, the hope would be they would get an extension to allow more discussion in the parliament. But these are very confusing to the average Brit. Right. And um, Well, what about international viewers? And, and international viewers. We voted on this three times already. Well, first of all, the terminology, the difference between the free trade area, a customs union. Soft Brexit, hard, soft hard Brexit, Brexit hard what Brexit. does that all mean? Basically, a soft Brexit disrupts trade the least. Um, at, but the, the hard Brexiteers say it engages us to too great a degree in, in the EU and we want a harder Brexit, which completely detaches us. It, yeah. So the what hand, is the likely outcome? I mean, let's, let's stop talking about alternatives. Let's talk about what markets should be pricing in. It's impossible to say at this point. I think the likely outcome at this point is that Parliament will not be able to make up its mind. And if it can't make up its mind, there's one alternative, which is a hard Brexit. That could come as quickly as April 12th. Or the other is that the European Union gives them more time. But the European Union is saying, we're not going to give you more time unless you give us a path to some end, some goal, not more time just to meander and have your acrimonious debate. Yeah, something tells me April 12th is a very soft deadline. We'll be talking about this for months to come. Probably. Bob, let's move on to talk about China, mm -hmm. U.S.-China trade, because those discussions are continuing this week in Washington, D.C. And I would say some surprising concessions being made by China in the last few days. So they're going to continue to hold off on reapplying those tariffs on U.S. autos. They've already signed into law this, I guess, they're going to ban companies in China from demanding technology transfers. Those are huge moves in my view. I think you're absolutely right. I, I think the Chinese have come a long way over the last two to three months for two reasons. One, because there are people actually in China who want to use this process to accomplish reforms. There are people in China who have intellectual property. They want their intellectual property protected. And they will support protecting foreign intellectual property because that means more foreign investment and more foreign trade. The investment law, which you correctly point out, was a big deal. At first, it was sort of poo pooed in Washington. Well, it's too general. But the fact is, the premier, yep. Li Keqiang, made the point that it's the regulations that are going to provide the details. And now we're beginning to learn more and more about the process of writing those regulations. And I think the Chinese really do see this as a chance to deal, not give the U.S. everything at once, but make 
progress internally. The reformers want that. They want more investment, and they want to have a better set of rules on intellectual property. China is being serious now. They're coming to the table with some, you know, serious indications. I would say, would you probably guess that we might have a deal on the table and signed by the end of April, May, June? It's hard to predict. I, it, these things take a long time. I've had a lot of negotiations with the Chinese, and they tend to take a lot of time. And this is far more complicated than any trade negotiation we've had with any country in the last 70 years, because it involves not just tariffs and non-tariff barriers, but actually investment-related issues, access. intellectual property issues, access issues. Access enforcement, issues. by the way. En enforcement issues. How do you enforce it? Who enforces it? What are the ground rules? Um, and, and it relates to exchange rates also, which have not really been major features in other negotiations. So this is a major negotiation with major consequences, far more complicated than any deal we've had. Absolutely. But the negotiators are serious negotiators. Bob yeah. Lighthizer and Steve Liu Mnuchin. He and Steve Mnuchin and Liu He are serious negotiators. And I think they understand that if there is no deal, if we go back to confrontation, it hurts our economy, it hurts the Chinese economy. Yeah. So there's mutually beneficial gain here. Absolutely. Or mutually beneficial prosperity. <laughs> if We're in fact that they, they do reach a deal, if they don't, there's mutually, uh, mutual economic disruption, right. uh, which okay. no one wants either.